Are your hands ready to cramp up? Good, because it's time for Konami's track and field. Part of the 1983 arcade game known for repeated button mashing as well as the voice telling your results. In Japan, this game was known as Hyper Olympics, and the arcade game was an official license title for the 1984 Olympics. The arcade game was a success, and it got a sequel, Hyper Sports, known as Hyper Olympics 84 in Japan. On the Famicom, hardware limitations meant that not everything could be packaged on one cartridge, so only four of the six events were transferred onto the home port. Track and Field wouldn't reach America until 1987, and by that time, releasing four games on a $50 cartridge may seem like too much. So if Konami took the Famicom version of Hyper Olympic, and the sequel released three months later, Hyper Sports, which only had four of the seven events on it, and combined them together into one ROM and sold it in America as a full game, making the American version the superior title. Well anyways, if there's anything you should know about track and field is that most of the events require severe tapping of the A button. If you want to run fast enough, tap, 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 and tap some more. Also that this game isn't taking place during the Olympics, but the Mario look-alike anonymous games. Seriously, why do they look like Mario? A 100 meter dash is pretty straightforward. Get to the end at the required time, even if you don't make it first. 110 hurdles is the same, but pressing up when you come to a hurdle. Long jump, triple jump, and the javelin throw all require running and then pressing at the right time to guide yourself or the javelin to land farther. You have three chances to reach the requirements, but can be a bit of a challenge here to correctly project the launch. In the arcade, there was a scale slider to help you launch correctly. That would really help here. In the triple jump, I have a pretty hard time figuring out the correct button press not to get a foul. Also mentioned the high jump, which I have no clue how to not properly jump without failing. The two black sheep with the bunch is skeet shooting and archery. Skeet shooting is the easiest event on the cart. Shoot to the left, press the control pad, shoot to the right, press A or B. Not much to say, it's super simple, in fact, I made the world record here. Archery is about shooting the bullseye. When you shoot, hold down the button to change the angle to get a better score. A bit interesting, but not too exciting. So I'm pretty meh on track and field as a whole, but I won't lie, when I successfully tap enough to win the event, I feel accomplished. And for some extra positives, in the original Japanese version, all the events must be completed one after another, but in the Western version, you can play any event you want. And compared to other NES minigame collections like Winter Games and Three Stooges, Track and Field feels like Olympic gold compared to them and is probably the best minigame collection on the NES. But for a better Olympic experience in this day and age, I guess the Mario and Sonic of the Olympic game series on the Wii may satisfy you more, as shaking on the Wii mode is a lot less exhausting than repeatedly tapping buttons.